the hate speech uh, law, which is making its way mm. uh, through. I don't know whether that is for a serious amendment because across the water we've got J.K. Rowling who... Mm has reacted to the Scottish hate speech kind of law about transgender and so on. And J.K. Rowling, she says, you know, arrest me when I come home, Mm. uh, the home of the Scottish Enlightenment. I'll be there when I come back. And she's had support from Rishi Sunak. Rishi Sunak, and I saw reading the newspapers out there in the Daily Mail, Michael McDougall as well. Yeah. So uh, she has a, a lot of supporters but, on that You know, front. all of this feeds think, into public discourse, whether yeah, it's over there oh, or for not. for sure, yeah. And I think our, our hate speech laws are slightly different to the, to the Scottish um, in around, especially the protection of women and the protection of uh, our penalties for misogynism and the likes. Look, the, it's definitely going to get ripped up. I doubt you're going to see anything in legislation for the locals and Europeans. That'd be political suicide. You're going to have uh, some sort of holding pattern, kick it down the road. Um, maybe it's one for the next government to come in and decide what they're going to do with it. But it has. It's just kind of ignited a, a certain group out there and it's kind of spread elsewhere. I don't think the, the average person on the street isn't going around worrying about committing hate crimes mm. is one aspect of it. But if it, it's this fear of it being the first step towards a bigger nanny state. So you think it might wither on the vine? It could wither on the vine. I wouldn't think they'd be rushing it through. Like the, the bare bones of it are the, the overarching... Um, reason for the legislation like it's not that bad like you don't want people being abused on the street or people inciting hatred against other groups